It's Monday, June 12th, and time for your Barbados Today morning news update. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Thanks for joining us. A large number of self-employed persons are not paying contributions to the National Insurance Scheme, and Prime Minister Frondel Stewart believes his government may need to strengthen laws to ensure that such payments are made. Addressing the scheme's 50th anniversary award ceremony at the Lloyd's King Sandiford Centre yesterday, the Prime Minister revealed that 3,500 people were registered as being self-employed. But he says estimates show that some 20,000 persons are working in the informal sector and those who fail to make the payments face the danger of a lower standard of living when they retire. Self-employed persons must be aware that not only do they benefit in the short term, but also in the long term when they reach the pensionable age. I've heard of far too many cases where self-employed persons have simply not paid their contributions and then in their retirement live way below the standard to which they had become accustomed. Over the last 50 years, Swajun has produced only modest results in this regard. I hold the view, therefore, given how high the stakes are, and for the protection of the self-employed themselves, that a legislative intervention may now be necessary. The National Union of Public Workers is threatening to take industrial action over the tax measures announced in the recent budget. In fact, Union President Akani McDowell says Finance Minister Chris Sinclair has until July 1 to repeal the taxes or implement a coping subsidy for public servants until salary negotiations are over. McDowell says the recently announced measures are expected to drastically increase the cost of living by at least 15% and workers are not in a position to bear the consequences at this time. He says if the minister does not meet the union's demands, industrial action could come in the form of a go slow, seek out or work to rule. The permission granted to build the controversial multi-million dollar Hyatt-centric hotel at Bay Street, the city, was above board. So says developer Bach Maloney, who broke his silence on the issue over the weekend, almost three months after social activist David Comichon lodged a legal challenge for the permission granted by Prime Minister Frondel Stewart for the construction of the 250-room hotel. Comichon claims the government failed to have public consultations or carry out an environmental impact assessment on the major beachfront development. However, Maloney, during an interactive session with the public at the Bay Street site, explained that while an EIA was not done, a heritage impact assessment was conducted. We did not carry out an environmental impact assessment on this project. We weren't required to. Had we been required to, uh, if in fact it was needed, we would have. So we haven't circumvented any requirements for any studies. In fact, we have done more studies on this project than any project in Barbados has ever had to do. Um, and our town planning application process has been a period of two years. That's, that's how long it has taken us to get to where we are today. So by no means have we circumvented any process or had any favoritism in terms of treatment because the requirements for us on this project, we've done a heritage impact assessment and, and I am not aware of any project in Barbados that has ever done a heritage impact assessment, but we have had to do a heritage impact assessment and we gladly did it. Uh, and it, it taught us a lot and, and you know a lot that we didn't know. Um, so we have, you know, we have carried out all the necessary, necessary um, impact studies. Maloney says efforts were also made to ensure that concerns such as beach access for residents and, a possi and the possible strain on the Bridgetown sewage treatment system were addressed. And he also made it clear that interactive sessions with the public was not a public relations stunt. The concerns of people will always be taken on board. We follow process and procedure, and our, we followed the process and procedure to today and haven't circumvented, as I reiterated, have not circumvented any process. So it's not a PR stunt, it's a PR 
requirement of what we are doing. And nothing that we are doing is, is, is going to be branded as a stunt or, or circumventing of process. Everything that we do is in keeping with the process and the requirements on us to do what we are required to do by the regulatory agencies. And there's no way that a project of this size could get permission by circumventing any processes. We have done everything that we've been required to do and we would pass all questions to do with those requirements of us to the regulatory agencies who are the bodies uh, responsible for giving the permissions um, for projects and our project is one of many. There are many projects in Barbados ongoing now that haven't had this type of criticism. Members of the public, including staunch supporters of the ruling Democratic Labour Party, continue to have their say on the Prime Minister's timing in getting a new $700,000 vehicle. However, there seems to be a split in opinion among diehard supporters. Bobby Destiny spoke with some of them on the controversial issue. I thought it was good for the Prime Minister because there are a lot of people in Barbados who do not understand that that car is not any particular Prime Minister's car. Right. It is the car of the Prime Minister's position. Right. Right? So if... It belongs to Barbados, right? Right. Mm -hmm. If the government changes tomorrow, whoever is Prime Minister, be driving that car when they demand the car, they can't carry home the car. Right. And a lot of people need to know this, and a lot of people don't. So I have no problem, I have no problem with people in school prior to it mm. to make Barbarians who do not know or who want not to know that it's not his car. We have the opinion that the timing of the new car was a wrong thing to do at this time, bearing in mind the the, the, the sort of questions we've been getting about the budget. We feel that it, that it was, it was a wrong move at this time. It should be taken into consideration and be delivered at the car should be kept. And then at a later stage, it should have been brought out. That's, a, that's an opinion that, that we express at our meetings on at the Democrat led party. He is well deserved to have a new vehicle as a public person, um, you know, Prime Minister Barbados, you have the Governor General, you have all of the, the judges and the Attorney Generals and all those people who are privileged and are privileged of having a car. And not only a car, but a driver to want to drive them. And I don't think that it would look good to see a Prime Minister turning up for a conference or any special occasion where even Her Majesty would have come here and she would have had a special car and seen the Prime Minister driving in a Suzuki or some other kind of vehicle. I think he's well deserving to have, you know, a person of the highest office to have that sort of facility. In sports, Usain Bolt marked an emotional farewell on home soil by winning his final 100 meter. The eight-time Olympic gold medalist easily won the Salute a Legend race in his first 100 meters for the year. He clocked 10.03 seconds and began his goodbye in front of 30,000 adoring fans in Kingston. The 30-year-old will bring down the curtain on his illustrious career when he retires in August after the World Championship in London. There's regional and international news after this short break. Morning, Miss Oya! Washing cars now. Well, I can't keep up with you at all. Yes, girl, you know they got provision to sell it slow. Mm. And I don't sell nation newspapers at all because they don't sell. So I washing cars now. I like to get up before 8.30 because I can't take the hot sun. You want the car wash? No, not today. It clean. But, but you're going in very early though? Yeah, I just going early so I can read the Barbados today online before work starts. Right. Well, you can still let me uh, clean the vendor for the $2. At least it's still cheaper than the nation newspaper. All right. <laughs> I, I got a special boo here that I got it showing me. Thank you. Uh -huh. Enjoy your day here. Uh -huh, you too. All right. What that paper is? She can see clearly when the dirt is gone. The Barbados Today, news you can trust. To news from the region, political parties in Bermuda suspend election campaigns 
as tributes pour in for MP Sean Cockrell, who died over the weekend. In his tribute, Premier Michael Dunkley said Crockwell was a very good friend despite recent political differences and was one of the brightest, most talented people he has ever known. Opposition leader David Bird said the late MP was a rare man of conviction and courage who promoted, defended and pursued his convictions regardless of favor. Cockwell, a former tourism minister, was found unresponsive at a residence and later pronounced dead at the scene. Foul play is not suspected at this time. However, a full inquiry into the politician's death is currently on the way. And finally, French President Emmanuel Macron's centrist party looks set to win a landslide victory following the first round of parliamentary elections. According to predictions, La Republique En Marche and Modem Ally is on course to win up to 445 seats in the 577-seat National Assembly. Now, the final outcome will be decided at a runoff next Sunday. And on that note, we come to the end of our news and sports update. But for the very latest, visit our website at www.pubidistoday.bb. Also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals or Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Or you can also tune in to Mix 96.9 FM for the very latest. I'm Fernanda Wedderburn. Good morning.